In this video, I hope to show the repair and restoration of a Warren Telecron 1938 Faro desk clock. Uh, it has a few issues with it, uh, the major one being that I received it in a non-working condition. The case also has quite a few scratches and worn areas on it, but what I liked about it is it has this inlaid wood, which I thought was rather attractive. And I don't know if they call it a Faro clock because of its sort of triangular pyramid shape. But um, the other thing I've noticed is that it was restored at some point in the past with a new power cord, except it's ridiculously short. So first step is opening it up and trying to figure out why the power isn't working. I do know that these Telecron clocks have a sealed rotor, which uh, can kind of freeze up and that may be the source of why it's not running. I've also noticed this is a bit of a scratch on the clock face right around the word Telecron, which I believe is caused by the hour hand. It's too close to the face and I think it's been scraping it as it goes around. So I hope to adjust that at least to prevent it from getting worse. I don't think it's something that I can improve upon. But the next step is to undo these couple of screws here. And usually the clock should just come right out. I may have to remove the set knob though, because the hole uh, behind it looks a bit small for the knob. To remove the set knob, I have to grab hold of the stem. I like to use a vice grip for that. I don't want to scratch up this case, so I'm going to protect it with a piece of cardboard. And then while that's being held, I'll just rotate the knob. What's interesting about some of these clocks is that they have a reverse thread. That is, instead of turning it to the left to loosen, I actually have to turn it to the right. Okay, next I will undo these two screws. Sort of an unusual design, these screws seem to have springs in them that I guess holds the whole thing tightly together. But we'll see if this just slips out or not. There we go. What I'm going to have to do is just cut this wire off of here because there's no way to remove. This is not one of the old Bakelite plugs that uh, the wire goes in and it screws uh, the connections together. So I'll probably cut it off here, leaving a bit of wire to use uh, when I connect the new power cord at the end. I'm gonna give myself plenty of extra wire here initially. I can always shorten it. Okay, this is now garbage. What I want to do next is remove the face and the hands. And it appears it's, it's held on. Uh, these metal tabs are bent over the plate here. So I'm going to have to bend out each one of these to remove the, the face. That'll take a while, so I'll do that and then I'll come back. I've bent all the tabs except the last two. In there. Okay. Have the glass. 
which we can put aside for now. And the rim. That should polish up quite nicely. The next step is going to be to remove the hands. And one thing you can do, it's not always necessary, but just so that you know how everything goes back together, this is where the 12 is. I'll put a little mark on the back of the plate. And that's how I know it's the top. So when we're putting it back together, I don't inadvertently reverse it. I start with the second hand first. It's held on for just a tight friction grip. And I'll just try to pry it off with a couple of screwdrivers. And that one came off rather easily. And it appears that the minute hand is also a friction grip. A lot of times you'll have a little nut that screws over it. So we'll see if we get lucky here. Here's number two. And We'll try the hour hand next, but I want to slip a thin piece of cardboard under it because I don't want to scratch the face at all. Let me find something for that. And that's the hour hand. Now the face should lift right out. And we'll have to clean that up. The next step is going to be to remove the mechanism with the gears and evaluate the sealed rotor here to see if this needs to be opened up and lubricated in order to get it to work. To do that, I have to undo these three screws. So I'll get set up and we'll work on that. A couple of things I've noticed and realized. One is there's a cardboard gasket sitting here. Got to take that off. And rather than take the plate off from this side, what I'm going to look to do is remove the rotor and the coil. What I'm doing is four screws here that hold it in. Actually, I think just these two. So let's take it off from this side first and see how that works. Okay. Oh. Okay, that stays there. Let's remove the rotor. Now, this should be able to turn relatively easily. And it's pretty frozen. It turns a little with the pliers. I don't want to press hard and damage the teeth here. Has a lot of dried up oil on it. What needs to be done, it's possible to open these up, clean out the old oil, and relubricate it. And I'll show you how we do that. Another thing you can do if you're fortunate enough to have an extra rotor is set it up in here, attach a wire here, and you should be able to see this output gear spinning. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to strip the wire here a bit and attach a new power cord to see if that works. However, you may not be fortunate enough to have an extra one of these. So I'm still going to show you how to open this up and to uh, lubricate it because that's maybe your only option if you're looking to do this uh, yourself. So let me uh, splice the wire here, strip the wiring, and I'll attach a power cord. I've stripped off the insulation and I've attached a new power cord and plugged it in. And I'll hold it up that you can see. 
the, my replacement rotor is spinning. So that tells me that the problem with this clock was the old rotor. And I will end up using this replacement rotor when I put the clock back together. But I'm still going to show you how to open up and clean out and relubricate the old one. <clears throat> when you hear talk about sealed rotors with these clocks, there are two kinds. There's the Telecron rotor, which is what we're dealing with this clock, and the Hammond rotor. Uh, the Hammond differs in that after it has been filled with oil when it's made, there's a plug that closes it up and then it gets sealed with solder. So when these go bad, it's a relatively easy matter to melt away the solder, remove the plug, and clean out the old oil. The Telecron rotors don't have that uh, option. There is no plug on it. So the only way to clean these out is to drill a hole through the side to access and drain out the old oil and put in some fresh lubricant. Now, I'm not going to actually drill into one of these, but I'm going to go through the steps of how to do it. So if you're dealing with the situation, you'll know what to do. The first thing is you have to be careful when you go to drill in to one of these because there's gears on the inside and you don't want to damage it. Now, after doing some research, I have found that if you view the rotor this way and you have your three little dimples and the output gear over here, the safe spot to drill into it is opposite this little dimple on the side. So what I have done to fix these, I would put a dot where I want to drill. Then because when you place a drill bit on here, it'll slide around on such a smooth surface. So if you get a tool such as a pointy nail set tool and just hold it on the side, give it a tap with a hammer, it'll make a little bitty indent. So when you put a drill bit there, it's not gonna you know, snake or, uh, slide around. <clears throat> the other thing to do with the drill bit is you don't wanna get any of the metal filings inside the rotor. So if you rub a little bit of white lithium grease on the drill bit, all those filings will stick to the bit instead of going inside. Once you have made your hole, the next thing to do is to fill it up with a penetrating oil such as liquid wrench. And what you want to get for yourself are these small little applicator bottles. Amazon has them. They're pretty cheap because it has a nice small tip. And you will fill this up with your liquid wrench and let it sit for 24 hours. At the end of that period, you shake all of it out, and then you're going to fill it up again, this time with 3-in-1 oil, and again let it sit for 24 hours, and then shake all of that out. Once it's totally drained, you can put in just a little bit of a synthetic clock oil. This stuff's a lot more costly than the other two, so you save this just for that, this purpose, just to lubricate it at the end. And then you can cover the hole with some metal tape, the kind of stuff that you see wrapping... Uh, uh, air conditioning ducts or the, uh, the exhaust duct from a dryer, clothes dryer, that kind of thing. And I even do the extra step of then covering that tape with some epoxy glue just to make sure it's never going to come off. Now that I know I have a rotor that works, I could just reassemble the clock and be done with it. But I did notice a lot of oil that seemed to leak out of this rotor and it's probably uh, got quite a bit of it on the gears on the inside. So I still plan to open this up and clean the gears and then, then put everything back together. So the next step is gonna to be to open this by taking off these three screws and uh, I'll show you how we do that. Before taking it apart, one thing to note on the set knob stem is a spring. So you wanna remove that, put it aside so we don't lose that. I've removed the three screws what you want to do now is just very carefully and slowly lift this plate off so as not to disturb the gears underneath it. And already a lot of oil has and old coming off on me, so it definitely must be gunked up in here. Okay, so that's pretty much the positioning of the gears. And what I always recommend here is to take a photo of this. And as you start taking the gears off for cleaning, each one comes off, take a photo. That way you'll have a good record for how to put things back together again. So that's what I'm about to do. And I'll show you one step at a time with that. I'm going to try to show the order that I take these off. First, I remove the set knob gear.
this gear appears to be riveted to the plate, so I can't remove it. But you can just see how much black gunky oil is all around here. So what I'm gonna do now is just clean all this up. A toothbrush with some Dawn dish detergent and some warm water should clean that up rather well. And once everything's clean, then we get to reassemble it. I've cleaned everything up. And one thing I noticed is that although this gear is held in place by a rivet, this one underneath it was not. It was held in just with all the gunked up oil. But I was able to get it out and clean this one up as well. And the next step is going to be to reassemble everything. One interesting thing I can tell you about is this little device, which is a power interruption indicator. And it fits on the plate. It's displayed through this indentation on the back plate. And when the clock's running, it'll show either, most of them are white, this one happens to be gold. And when power is lost, it'll flip to the red. And if the power comes back on, it still is on red. So theoretically, when someone came home and looked at their clock, even though it was running, they would know that it had stopped and it was no longer the correct time. It ends up being displayed on the face up here. Now, of all the clocks that I have restored, this is the one item I've yet to get to function properly. I really don't know why. I do know that it, it works on the magnetic field that's generated when power goes through the coil. And um, when the uh, magnetic field is lost by the power being out, it drops down. And to reset this, you just have to tilt the clock the other way. Anyway, just an interesting thing. And if we're lucky when this is back together, maybe it will work. One thing that needs to be done before reassembling the gears is I need to lubricate them. I'm gonna be using my synthetic clock oil and you wanna put some in the individual teeth. Whichever one of these gears is gonna engage with another one around the perimeter here. Same thing in here, I do a little bit around the edge. You also wanna put oil in each of the bushings that the uh, stems of the gears fit into, the small little holes that you have here. Same thing on this plate here. All the little holes that the uh, gears fit into. So I'm going to lubricate everything and then I'll get ready to reassemble it. It can take a bit of time to position all of the gears properly in here. So rather than waste time doing that, I'm going to put them all together and then we'll come back. Uh, the key thing is once they're in here and I am positioning the plate back over it, what you have to do at that point with your fingers is you're going to lean in and just sort of guide each gear into its respective hole to line everything in so it'll click in tight and then you can put the screws back in it. So I will do all of that and then we'll come back. Everything is back in. I've screwed the plate together and to check to see if you think everything's in correctly, you can give the set uh, knob a spin and look to see if the gears are rotating along with it, which I think you can see that they are. So I think we have this together correctly. The next step is going to be to get the rotor back into it. It'll take a bit of time to get the rotor in as well, so I'll just show you the steps. But this is going to be positioned here, and then underneath the two holes and into here are going to be these little support legs which fit under the, uh, the frame of the rotor and then the two screws are going to anchor it all together. So I'm going to put it all together and then we'll come back. I've seated and placed in the rotor. The key steps in doing it is I actually place the rotor first into the plate so that I can position it correctly then slip the housing over it. Before doing that do not forget to put the spring back on the set knob that keeps it out of the way after you've set it. And the support, the two screws, tighten it up and we're set. Now before going any further, I'm going to attach the power cord again and then I'm just gonna seat the second hand and we'll see if it's still working. I've attached the power cord I put the second hand back on. I'm going to plug it in and we'll see what happens.
and it's running. So everything has been put together properly. We're good to go. The next step would be to put the face back on along with the hands, the glass and the, and the uh, frame. But first I need to clean all of those parts up. So I'll do that and then we'll come back. One thing I'm happy about and want to show you is that it appears the power interruption indicator is working. Uh, right now we have it running. And you can see that the gold is showing and now I'm gonna unplug it. And it dropped down to red. And now if I plug it back in, It's running. I just have to flip it upside down and it gets set back to the gold color. So I'm pretty happy about that. Anyway, next up, as I was saying, is to clean up all the uh, parts of the face. One interesting addition is I was looking at the old rotor, trying to decide if I wanted to go to the effort of opening it up at some point to try to fix it. When I noticed sort of a groove in the side of the of the rotor. It, it looked as if it had been created by a small circular saw, the kind that you might use with a Dremel motor drill, that kind of thing. And when I looked even more closely, I saw a really tiny pinhole, which I have since widened. I don't know if you can see that there, but... And that's the reason so much of the oil had leaked out and got all over the mechanism and the gears in there. Anyway, so now I might as well go ahead and restore this. The first step I'm going to do is just fill this up with that liquid wrench. Let it sit for the 24 hours and then uh, proceed from there. It's been soaking with the liquid wrench for 24 hours. The next step is to shake it all out. Usually it has a bit of a greenish uh, color to it and that's the old oil being removed. And it takes a few minutes to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it all out and then I will fill it up this time with the three in one oil and let it sit for another 24 hours. What I've done is drained it of the three-in-one oil and then I placed just a little bit of the synthetic clock oil in here, just a few drops of it. And then I sealed up the hole with a piece of the metal foil tape. And just to make sure that it actually is going to work, what I can do is insert it into a separate coil that I have. And we'll plug it in. And as you can see, it's working. This rotor hap happens to turn at 3.6 RPMs. So it's very slow compared to the Hammonds, which I believe is uh, 60 RPMs. but this can be put aside and as an extra rotor for me now. And now I can move on to cleaning up the rest of the clock parts. Everything is cleaned up. The next step is going to be reattaching the dial and the hands. First, I have to put the gasket back on. And then the dial. And then the hour hand. And you want to position the hour hand at the 12, and then the minute hand right over that. also on the 12. Then the second hand. Once that's on, you put the glass over it, set the frame over it,
And once it's all in, as it is now, I just have to bend these tabs back into position and that should secure everything. That'll take a little bit, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back. Everything's secured back on tight. And the next step is to place it back into the case, which I have completed the restoration on that as well. It came out rather nice. All the scratches are gone. The finish looks good. And before placing the clock back in here, you want to put the power cord through the hole in the back. And what you want to do is place a knot in it. That way, if someone ends up pulling on the cord, it's not going to pull apart the connections. And that's what I'm going to do next. Attach these two wires here, place the clock back in the case, secure it with the two screws on the back, and I'll do all that and then come back. Everything is back in place. The screws are in tight, the wire is in, everything's hooked up. The last step is to place the set knob uh, back on the uh, stem. I'm going to try to protect the wood with a piece of cardboard so I don't scratch it with the vice grip. And again, this is a reverse thread, so I have to turn it to the uh, left to tighten. That pretty much completes things. Now we plug it in. See if it is running. And there you go. The Telecron Faro Clock from 1938, fully restored and repaired. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, I have several others that I've done, uh, different clocks, although the steps and techniques are pretty much the same. I always come across something new with every clock. And um, you're welcome to leave any questions and comments. That's it. Bye for now.